Communities als Lernumgebung mit Tanja. Danke. Danke dir. Communities as a learning environment. Tanja. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy that I can talk about communities with you today because uh, some of you know that this is my true passion and I think that learning is something fantastic and I know exactly that I will leave here tomorrow and I will have learned a lot of new things. So what could be better than linking these two topics and to talk about learning communities with you? Now, communities in German Gemeinschaft that is a simple translation if you just transcode the term, but that's not what we want to do. And we've already heard it, how this is done these days. The first thing that I did when preparing for this um, for this event, I asked chat GPD, what is a community really? Now, you don't need to read it all. I just brought it along. What is interesting is that the German term Gemeinschaft is much more complex than the English community. In English, you have uh, housing projects and things like that that are called a community. And the two sentences that I preferred actually men, were this community is uh, marked by deep personal and uh, direct social links, and these links are based on uh, common beliefs, traditions, and a strong feeling of belonging. And this is exactly what communities are for us, the personal relationships, the things that connect us, that, uh, that tie us together, the social interaction. We learn not just for ourselves, we learn together. And with these two sentences, we are right at the heart of communities because all the knowledge of the world, everything that we ever want to learn or don't want to learn, can be found on the internet. I can Google it, I can ask ChatGPT, I can learn today how to build a rocket and uh, go to the moon with it. But all that knowledge, the mere information as such, will not be helpful to me. I cannot process this knowledge if I do not know how to apply it. I need to be able to challenge it and I need to know how I can use this knowledge relating to my challenge and in my organization because all the organizations are different. The challenges vary. So this knowledge needs to be challenged and we need to apply it with together with others. And learning communities are just great. They allow us in a group of like-minded people to have an exchange, to really apply that knowledge together. They help us with the uh, research and help us to find exactly that kind of information that is relevant for me and my challenge. We can go into a discussion and enter into an exchange and we can make use of the knowledge together. And when preparing for today, I uh, stumbled across the Bloom's Taxonomy. Probably most of you here know this much better than I do, but I think this is fantastic because it just shows so well what communities are for. It is not just about remembering, understanding and uh, gathering uh, knowledge. But communities allow us to go up this pyramid as far as we want to. We can ask questions when a particular piece of information doesn't seem credible. If we have further questions that we would like to ask, we can apply all this together because what's the use of me knowing that there's a theoretical case on the internet. I need to know how to apply it in my organization with our uh, regulations and rules and uh, apply it to our case. I can analyze the information and evaluate it, but if you want to, you can even take one step further and evaluate something and to create something completely new. So it's up to me to decide how much I want to climb up that pyramid. But the communities allow me to go from the very bottom to the very top of the pyramid if I want to. In 2002, Etienne Wenger defined communities of practice as a group of people who have a 
common concern, a series of problems, or a passion for a topic, and who want to deepen their knowledge and uh, um, the expertise in this area by interacting continuously. And that is what uh, this taxonomy is made of, the interaction. We create something together. We exchange knowledge. We learn together. But now that we know why learning communities are so great, well, what does it take to create a learning community? How does it have to be shaped so that uh, employees like to engage, so that learning is fun and that people like to be part of a learning community? Well, first of all, we need a common mission. We need a common expectation. Now, do I want to go through the Learn Us guide and uh, have learned something after the 12 weeks and have created something? Or do I want to write a new learn, learning guide? Do I want to develop one? So what's the mission that brings us together? What is the objective that we want to achieve? Where are we heading out to? Where do we want to go? And there are different ways or different possibilities in these learning communities. We need to define for ourselves where this mission takes place, how it works out, and what we want to achieve. We need low obstacles, low hurdles, so that people want to engage. Low hurdles means that we communicate at eye level together. It doesn't matter whether the top boss of management is there or a trainee. We all communicate at eye level in learning communities. We engage in an exchange. No question is too stupid to be asked. Everybody is welcome. So it means that the learning community must provide the possibility for different people to participate. And everybody learns differently. Everybody talks about videos, videos, videos. Go for video content. That's great. Well, personally, I learn better when I read things and when it comes to books, when I can hold them, if I have the haptic feeling and can mark passages in the book. Everybody learns differently. So communities with low entry hurdles must take that into account. How do we want to learn together? Everybody must have the possibility to learn as fits him or her best. You cannot push all your video content on everybody. Every community needs to find its best way of learning together and open different paths on how people can learn together. So it also depends on the platform. How do we meet? Where do we meet? Do we meet in person or virtually? Do we have a technical platform? If so, which one? Community is often just uh, understood as a technical platform, but no, the community, that's us humans, and we define how and where we exchange our information. It's about trust. If I learn something somewhere, if I uh, set out to learn something new, then mistakes will be made. It's not going to work out. Uh, perfectly the first time around. And on LinkedIn, I saw a post where somebody showed how somebody learned to make a pancake. The first one just was too liquid and looked terrible. And then that person uh, kept going. And at the end, it was perfectly round, beautiful pancakes. But to learn something as simple as making a pancake will not work out the first time around. And everything that we want to learn in an organization or in a personal context will not be easy either. We will make mistakes. And we need people of whom we know, OK, I can make a mistake here. People are not going to laugh at me. People will come and take me by the hand and let me know what the problem is. Or we might make mistakes together simply because we have a safe, safe space here in this learning community where we can try, try things out, because that is at the heart of learning communities, learning together, trying things, growing together. And for that, trust is required. I m must trust that I can go there and ask all the relevant questions that I have. But it also takes moderation and interaction. No community works on its own. We need people who push the topic. We need people who um, keep animating this, keep pushing and say, hey, we had this here and we had this there. 
Community manager is a term that is often used for that function. And I know some people who don't like the term manager when we talk about communities. They always say, but managing these people, that doesn't work. And management, that sounds like hierarchies and budgets and things like that. Well, just call them hosts or maybe split it up in different roles. But what is important is that there's people there who push ahead with the community, who drive the community, and who might be the sole entertainer in the community and make sure that people do get together. Community managers are those who create a framework so that others can unfold their potential in that framework. Managers motivate people to try things, who say, well, we have an environment here where you can exchange uh, your views. If you don't have that, it's not going to work out. You need facilitators and you need a core group. Communities never start out as big communities. It's not thousands or hundreds of people. You can start small with three people or ten people, whatever might fit your needs. Find a close-knit community of people with whom you exchange views, people who get to know each other, who really know how the others think, how they are. And uh, you can still grow, but if you start out too big, these links, this trust will never have a chance to grow. Don't think too big at first. Start small and keep evolving. Communities are great. Learning communities are great. But there are a few challenges that you will face if uh, you want to start out on your own or in an organization. First of all, community is a term that is often used. I'm happy that I see many faces here who know exactly what that term encompasses. But Many people just don't know what this actually means. They think of some old-fashioned uh, fora, and I'm not even talking about uh, technology. They have an old-fashioned image in their head, or they think of uh, influences on Instagram and all the followers and the hype for reach, because these influences talk about communities as well. It is used uh, overproportionately and, and uh, just too much. What is important to know is that a community is a group of people who want to achieve something together. If it's a learning community, they want to learn together. They rely on personal relationships. How exactly it works, that is up to you to define. You create the framework, you find your platform, you find the topic that this is all about, how big, how small, uh, online or in an analogous way. Community is something where you come together with your group of people. It's got nothing to do with obsolete images or a hype that uh, influences push because the term community is so cool. You define what your community is and how you act in your community. The second challenge that many face, and this has got something to do with that uh, notion of a community, is all right, yeah, communities are great, but do I have time for that? My desk is full. I've got thousands of appointments, calls, emails, and all of that is much more important than uh, to participate in a community now. So this has got to do with the fact that uh, internally, the notion of a community is misused. You have a work circle and they have an objective that was imposed on them by their boss and they are told you're a community now instead uh, of being a work group. But it's a voluntary thing. I want to get involved. I want to participate. You don't need to have a defined goal. It might exist, but it doesn't have to be there. It might be a loose network or a loose network can also be misunderstood as a community. A community is much more, um, much closer, tightly knit. In order to know what a community is, you have, need to have experienced it. I must have understood 
how a community is a benefit for me, how I can progress thanks to it. And once I have experienced the benefit of a community, then I am happy to get involved. If I have a full desk, on the other hand, you need to find a way to get there. And there are different measures that organizations can take. Some have a uh, time model so that 10% of your work time is used for, for that or 20% where the organization says, okay, you are allowed to engage in a community in order to learn. There are other organizations where there are discussions um, to integrate that into the targets and not as a target achievement, meaning you get more money because that would be the exact opposite of what communities want, and that's intrinsic motivation, but rather in the uh, sense of, we talk about that in our annual appraisal, in your uh, talk to your superior, in order to show appreciation, and saying the time that you spend in communities is valuable, because they, the communities um, really offer a lot of benefits. It, uh, it anchors people in organizations as well, and it helps organizations to retain people. And the third thing is, unfortunately, the interpreter can no longer hear the sound. Okay. I don't know what, what people are talking about here, setting up a community. Um, well, it takes time. Setting up a community takes time. You need patience. And you need to know how to start, because otherwise, you lose the people who actually want to do something with you. They want to create something. And this leads me to the Learn Us guideline, because there's a lot of theoretical knowledge and many practical hints as well that describe very well how you can create a community and where is defined what a community might look like, what it may be. And uh, with this guideline, you can actually tackle all the challenges I just mentioned. And you can see the team of authors here. We took this picture last year here. That's when we all met for the first time in person after working virtually for two years. Apart from Achim, everybody is here. I've met everybody yeah, all over the place here. I see them. Achim will be there tomorrow with me at the Meet the Speakers or Meet the Authors session. And uh, Felix, Isabel, and myself will provide a session on how to make use of the guideline, what the best practices are in order to uh, make progress in community management. OK, I have one minute left. Does anyone have a question, maybe? You said that community takes a community takes time for a uh, to be created. What about um, down so that people leave the community um, with a good feeling? Well, there are communities that come to an end. You don't need to keep them alive artificially just because there's a community there and you want to keep it alive. For some. The topic has come to its end, and then there are two decisions. Either you want to reactivate it, then I need to ask the members, hey, why did you join? Do you still want to be engaged? What do you need to do? What do we need to do? What do we need to change so that we can keep going? Or you might come to the conclusion that it doesn't make any sense anymore. Let's start something new, or let's drop the topic altogether. But then you need to make a uh, put a conscious end to the community. You can look back on everything that you've achieved. You can celebrate, have a party, so that it's not a negative ending, but a positive one. And then you just uh, either create a new community, find a different community, or something like that. Thank you very much, Tanya.